Hey guys, welcome back to Sage and Stone Homestead. My name is Heather. We actually have a couple of exciting outdoor projects that we're doing today and I'm gonna try to take you along for those. But I am making some bone broth today. I'm gonna put this on to simmer while we're doing things around the farm. And I promised you guys that I'd take you along the next time that I made bone broth. So all I have in my pot right now is bones that I've collected in the freezer. Now these could be bones from things that we parted out raw. Like when we part out our rabbit to cook it in pieces, usually the rib cage and part of the hip is left behind. So we've got some of those in there. There's some cooked chicken bones, cooked turkey bones, but not all the bones are necessarily cooked because they don't necessarily have to be, especially when you're using like a white meat source, the bones from a white meat source. I also have about a half gallon bit of summer squash that I had in the freezer from 2021. It has some freezer burn on it and we're coming into the growing season where we're going to be getting some fresh summer squash real soon. So I just decided to clear that out of the freezer and put that in here as well. So I've grabbed some herbs from the garden. I have some chives, oregano, um, this is rosemary down here and some thyme. Usually I will chop up or I'll quarter a whole onion and stick it in here, but because I have chives, I'm just gonna let the chives be that flavor in the broth. Put those down in here too. You're gonna have to excuse the state of my kitchen. We did just have a power outage for almost a full 48 hours. And so we're catching up on things like dishes and all that. So I buy this big old thing of bay leaves from our local Amish uh, bulk supply store. Really, really good price. I'm only gonna need about two or three. Put those in here. And I have a whole bunch of garlic bulbs. These are probably from 2021 as well. Some of them are starting to dry out and so they're not gonna be really great to put back in the garden or do much else with, but they'll still flavor this broth beautifully. So what I'm gonna do is just take these little dried out garlic bulbs here and cut them in half this direction see some of the some of the garlic cloves inside are fine and this smells lovely but some of them around the outside edge are a little bit dried up those are perfectly good for something like this cutting the garlic bulbs in half like this really helps open up the flavor and make it accessible in the broth this is a good use for those really tiny garlic heads that you'll sometimes get that you really don't want to be peeling apart those really tiny cloves to try to cook with them. This is a really great way to use them. That or using them to stuff inside like whole chickens or something. So add garlic to your tastes. I'm making, this is probably going to give me about two or two and a half gallons of broth when we're all done. So I'm adding a decent amount of garlic. I think there's already five bulbs in there, small bulbs. Got these peppercorns. I'm just gonna put, I don't know, half a tablespoon in here. And this is the important part. Um, if you miss this step, it's not a catastrophe. You can still absolutely use the broth. It's still really good. But adding something like apple cider vinegar into the broth really helps draw those nutrients out of the bones. That was probably a half cup. All I'm doing right now is adding water until the bones are just covered. I've made broth before where I did a little bit of bones and a lot of water and it's just not as good. It's diluted and it doesn't gel up in the fridge. If you've ever had a really good bone broth, you know what I'm talking about where as soon as it's cold, it almost turns to jello in the refrigerator. As far as I know, that gelling is caused by collagen and all the good things that are in a really good bone broth. I'm not gonna add salt at this time. Um, I wanna be able to flavor the broth per what I'm using it in or what I'm using it for. This is really just a base and I can add things like salt to it later. I personally think it's really important to avoid sweet things like carrots in the broth because that sweetness just overpowers and it doesn't work well for me in a lot of recipes. I don't really look for a sweetness like that. So I wouldn't be using something like tomato skins or carrots for this and probably not something like sweet potatoes. So I'm using my pressure canner in order to make the broth today, but I'm not going to be bringing it up to pressure. You could though. You could bring your canner up to like 10 pounds of pressure and let this cook for about three hours and then bring down the pressure as you normally would for your canner and you have a broth at that point, a quicker broth. What I'm gonna do, because I'm not able to be inside for the full time that this is cooking, I'm just gonna set this on low and actually let it run on about level two on my stove for at least a day. I usually like to take it about three days. 
Do I have enough sheep and goat fence? Yeah. Oh, good. pasture that we're in right now is actually our chicken run and very often especially throughout the breeding season I do put goats over here um, to be able to separate my different breeding groups and it just works out really well except um, when I do have goats in here I can't really add any bedding to my nesting boxes and I have to feed the chickens on the outside of the fence. And so really having a bare nest box and not having amazing access to the food does take down our egg production. And really it's not the most ideal thing to run goats with chickens. There's really not a lot wrong with it, especially when they have a bigger area. You just have the chance of coccidia kind of spreading in an environment like this. So in order to like benefit the chickens more and benefit the goats more, I am cross fencing this pasture. This whole pasture really wasn't set super ideally. Um, it's really only going to be able to be used well for things like chickens or really small goats. So that's what I intend to place in this pasture. The whole thing is 100 feet by 100 feet in total, chicken run and goat pasture included. And it does have this welded wire fence, which is not great for goats. It's held up pretty well the few years that we've had it up with goats goats in here off and on, but even Nigerian dwarf dairy goats, when they stand on these welds, they pop and the fence just doesn't hold up as long as a woven wire fence. So our cross fence that we're putting in here is extra woven wire sheep and goat fence. We do have a T post driver and you could easily dig holes for the wooden posts, but Levi likes to use the tractor to, to push the poles in. This is how we fenced our really big pasture that goes around the pond. Um, we did use a post hole digger and concrete for those poles over there. But as far as the T-posts, that's exactly what he did. He just set them and squished them in and it works really well. for hay? I'm not giving you hay. You want to go to the pond? Come on. Let's go to the pond. Let's see. Come on. Hey, can we try going to the pond? Shreni, how you doing? I'm really hoping that by the time that this posts, Shreni will have given birth. Um, I hope she gives birth before my bone broth is done. Um, she has been running around with the herd just eating pasture and going really far away from the, the barn, which I wouldn't expect if she was in any kind of labor situation. I feel like she would stay close to the barn. Are you okay? Yeah, you've got to stay in here and bond with your baboos. Yeah, you have baboos. Hi, honey. Good morning. We'll come back and get a closer look at the babies in just a second. I want to see if Anyone but the dog is gonna follow me out to the pond. My kids and I saw them munching on grass at the pond, which is awesome because the grass down there is growing really, really well. And I really want to stop feeding hay because I only have eight bales left. Come on, let's go to the pond. Come on. See, look, evidence. 
We've been out here. What is this? What is this? That's a goat. They've been over here. Yeah. Oh, that's a dog. This is a goat. Look. That's a big goat. That was probably Christine. Yep. Oh, yes, they're following me. I thought they would. I hoped they would. I think it's probably going to be pretty hard to see. But there's ducks in the pond way over there. It's either ducks or geese. Actually, I think those are Canadian geese. It's good. I would like to encourage waterfowl to be here, those are geese. Um, because we do have kind of a decent slug and snail issue because it's just so boggy and wet here. And the slugs and snails are actually a vector species for a type of worm that we have had infect our goats. It's the meningeal worm and it's really nasty. So if the waterfowl are here, in theory, they are eating up those slugs and snails and we'll have less of an issue. But also our livestock guardian, Mars, he really likes to patrol this area and that helps keep the deer out. And the deer are really the species that that meningeal worm is after. They don't survive well in goats, but they can really hurt the goats. So if we have the dog here to keep the deer out and the waterfowl here to keep the snail population down, we should be pretty good as far as that worm goes. Mars and I are going to wait on the goats. They're coming. Mars, Mars, you're not a goat. <laughs> you're not a goat. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Come on, Calamity, let's go back. Hey Margie. Margie's looking large. She's due March 17th. Look at her. So the audio got kind of messed up during Tempest's birth video. So I plan on doing sort of a voiceover pretty soon. The voiceover very well could come out before this video, but just in case, this is baby number one. She is actually going to her new family tomorrow. And I've had questions before about, you know, you sell them at two days old? I do. Once I can see that they're good and strong, they've had a couple days to get as much of mama's colostrum as they can, I do sell our little babies as bottle babies. <laughs> okay, I'll put you down. A lot of people in our area like to buy bottle babies, and so it works out really well. I'm able to milk mama, and then the people who buy the goats get exactly what they want, a bottle baby. A lot of people like bottle babies for the friendly factor. We don't have a problem getting friendly goats out of damn raised animals, but a lot of people prefer a bottle baby. <laughs> You're a good mama. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So there's still a couple adjustments that need to be made or a couple little finishing touches that need to happen for the shelter out here. But all of this was made with stuff that we had laying around the farm, which was kind of the whole point of this project. No, it wasn't done 
ideally, but it was done effectively and it's gonna work very well for our purposes, especially for the price. So a lot of you know that we do have a pretty serious wind situation here. And so all of our shelters that we make for our goats are anchored into the ground. So much like you saw Levi sinking in the poles for the fence, he sunk in these posts here. So what we're gonna have to do is put another piece of plywood here to block that off and make this a nice little indoor dry refuge. And because our ground is so muddy and mucky, if there isn't grass growing on it, I do like to lay down at least one pallet inside the shelters because over time, as the goats waste their hay, it kind of creates this elevated floor in these little shelters and it stays nice and dry. So remember how I said that I hoped that my goats would, would have given birth by the time the broth was done? They did. And in the morning, I like to check on all the baby goats, especially if they're brand new. So we're gonna go do that. Did you have babies? Get that fat, fat baby bunny. Mama does a good job. 10 rabbit babies, and that's a good size litter. So we like to raise these up for our local farm store and they buy the whole litter for $7.50 per kit. So with 10 babies, that equals $75, which is not bad. It definitely doesn't cost $75 to raise those guys up to eight weeks. We hear you. Good morning. Good morning, Lars. How are you? So remember how I said I was going to sell Tempest little girl? We did, she went into a really loving family and we decided we're gonna keep this little guy. His name is Mochi. Hello. This kidding stall door pushes inwards and so I'm not gonna go in there right now, but her babies look good and cozy. Shvenny delivered twin bucklings yesterday and she needed a little bit of help, but she did really well. It was her first time having standard size kids and they're pretty big. So because Shvenny had boys, I did wanna keep girls back for dairy, but these guys are gonna be some of our meat goats for our family. We like to raise at least four every year for us, some of our family members and some of our friends. So these guys will be a great contribution to that. Alrighty, so it's been three days that our broth has been simmering on the stove and the broth has really decreased a lot. Um, I did have my pressure canner locked like this, but the steam vent pipe is open. So the broth has been able to condense down a little bit, which is not a bad thing. So my plan is actually to can most of this broth. And because this broth is in my canner, I have to get it out of the canner in order to clean the canner so that I can can the broth. So I'm going to be actually canning these in quarts. It's something I do all the time. When I can up my bone broth, I don't worry about skimming off the fat. I've never had a problem with the fat causing the jars to not seal. And I think that's one of the reasons people tell you to skim off the fat when you can it. Um, I think a lot of people worry about the fat going rancid. We haven't had the fat go rancid at all on any of the meats that we've canned or any of the broths that we've canned. So it may not really be necessary, but that's up to you. So after the broth is all strained out, there's still a lot of goodness left in the pot. It's not necessarily nutrition dense, but those bones contain a lot of calcium that's very valuable to chickens. So I know there's gonna be quite, probably quite a few people that take an issue with feeding chicken bones back to chickens. I don't have an issue with it. I can't see a problem with it. So it's something that I do because I see how it benefits my flock. When the bones have been simmering for that long, they're very, very soft and the chickens can clean them up and tomorrow it'll look like nothing was even there. So I'm not gonna go over the full canning process here. I did just take a canning 101 video. So if you're interested in that, I'm gonna leave it up here. And if you did miss the goat births that we've had recently, I have a full playlist of our 2022, 2023 kidding seasons and I'm gonna leave that right here too. 